and he breathed into Adam his spirit. So the creation of man was complete. And he breathed into Adam his spirit. So the creation of man was complete. He had all that was needed to begin his journey. He was blessed with a soul and given a status not seen before, one of which even Jibra'il was unworthy. It's not hard to imagine him crafted to perfection, but he wasn't perfect yet. God hadn't finished. Well, Nearly, there was a piece of knowledge that was missing from the very first human, one that would finally let him see clearly. Without it, he'd eat a fruit. Without it, he'd eat a fruit. And truly, he cannot be blamed. He approached the tree innocent and sincerely. Without the names God then taught him, none of us would stand a chance. Without the names God then taught him, none of us would stand a chance. Without the name Fatima, we're not even human, really. Her name sprung an ocean, which we now call this world. Her name sprung an ocean, which we now call this world. It lit a match we call the sun and pushed planets that around it circled. She mothered everything from her father to heaven's river. She mothered everything from her father to heaven's river instead of cradling Mahsin, the universe she cradled. I found myself scattered. There were souls everywhere. God had gathered us together, some information to share. We'd been there for so long, wondering what was next. Some whispered to each other, but to speak louder, no one dared. I met others and felt in a strange way connected. I wanted to ask, do I recognize you from somewhere? But surely not. This was just the beginning. Surely not. This was just the beginning. I didn't know what I was, let alone who or when or where. Most were preoccupied, running from themselves. Some begged to be let down. Others already kneeled, uttering a prayer. It was a land of souls. It was a land of souls waiting for something and when the moment God chose came, an angel announced, lower your glare, a soul cloaked in light would enter our crowd. The rest of us couldn't see, we found ourselves bowed and just as the wait became all too much, she raised a hand and it began, just as God had vowed. What was to be my life began, in a mercy of God, I would grow. What was to be my life began. In a mercy of God, I found myself grow. There was more to me now. There were fingers and there were toes. I was able to move a little. Although space was limited, my heart began to beat. My heart began to beat and flesh surrounded it like clothes. I was breathing through a tube. I was breathing through a tube air that was fed to me. I don't know what I'd have done if that tube had closed. But by the mercy of my Lord, who adorned my soul with bone, I realized I wasn't alone, and my eyes from their sockets rose. And as the first ray of light entered developing cells, I realized there was just one source to all of the light that glows. Her light pierced every organ I had in me forming and to devote every part of me to her. In that moment I chose from the womb in which I was blessed to begin. She was by my side from day one. It was like having a twin. But how I wish my life ended right there and instead continued the life of Muhsin. I sat in comfort and warmth and heard all my mother heard. She'd speak to me sitting on her prayer mat. We'd go for early walks and she'd describe the streets. I'd picture the world throughout our morning chats. And one day she took me to a new place. It made me nervous. There were sounds I'd not heard anything like them yet. So she felt my distress and placed a hand over my house. She called out a name that I would never forget. His name was repeated with every hardship she felt, every cramp and every pain. To Hussein she'd dedicate every eye wet. And in these gatherings she'd take me to from before I'd exist. Listening to his name was like watching a sunset. It was around this time that I came to realize 
At each stage of my being, I'd have infallible allies. But it became clear their holy lives would be full of sorrow, and I prepared myself to share their every pain and every cry. I'd spent all that time alone, just me and my Lord. Before I came into this world, I bore witness to His power. I felt like I had a connection. I felt like we had a connection, a secret or two, like the turning of a bud into a flower. It was only when I sat through my first majlis, I heard there was someone who God loved more. It was only when I sat through my first majlis, I heard there was someone who God loved more. He loved her so much that she became God's secret, who, was, who the rest of creation was created for. All this time I had thought I was the most important to God. Each second of my presence, each second of His presence, I'd exalt and adore. He made me feel like I was the only existence and that all of His intent and that all of his attention was focused upon me. I could have swore my life had only just begun, but I realized my mistake when I heard them describe her and claim they'd die for her sake. I felt her light inside me more than the air in my lungs, and I felt my bones rot when they said her rib would break. I slowly started to understand she was even more than I thought. I thought she was an angel sent down to look after me alone. I'd have to repent for years now after finding out the truth. I didn't know who she was. If only I had known. How could I reduce her to a simple angel? Why didn't God tell me for my sin? How can I atone? It might be because had I, re had I recognized her before him. It might be because had I recognized her before him. It might be because had I recognized her before him, I slowly started to understand she was even more than I thought. I thought she was an angel sent to look after me alone. I'd have to repent for years now after finding out the truth. I didn't know who she was. If only I'd have known. How could I reduce her to a simple angel? Why didn't God tell me for my sin? How can I atone? It might be because had I recognized her before him, maybe Zahra I would have worshipped alone. How merciful is that Lord who endowed me first with his spirit. Only then from her light the skin on my bone was sown. Whenever this bounty some calls life comes to an end. Whenever this bounty some call life comes to an end after the name of God, write her name on my tombstone. I grew older, life took over, people came and went, but she was always there, Fatima and her children. They became more like friends. I didn't have many others and I could never have guessed how much I'd need them. I was studying. Day after day, I'd learn something new. She'd inspired me to go out and gain an education. Behind each classroom door that I would enter, there was a room full of knowledge and information. One day she showed me another door. One day she showed me another door, her very own, and how behind it stood nothing but illumination. I was taught before I enter a room I should not. And she revealed how they failed to obey this regulation. I saw them raise a hand towards her door. I couldn't tell which was louder, her scream or his roar. I never knew light so beautiful could be burnt. I never knew God's secret they would dare to ignore. There was one friend I remember. He was quiet, unlike the others. I kept catching him staring straight up to the sky. He described it as a mental health day when he didn't turn up one day. That wasn't like him, so I had to ask why. We spoke about his worries. For some time he said he had none. It took a while, but then he begun. I'd empathize with the maze we both had for our heart. The pain in his eye was like a mother who'd lost her son. He told me it was his sister. She was no longer pregnant. I gazed upwards like he would. I stood there stunned. He'd cry. So would I, but not for him. We'd recall the wail of Fatima. Oh father, they've taken away your grandson. And so this is how it went on. 
Each moment I shared with the family who to, to whom my allegiance I declared from birth to this moment and until the very end to see that light one more time I prepared and when the time came I found myself scattered. There were souls everywhere. God had gathered us together some information to share. We'd been there for so long wondering what was next. Some whispered to each other but to speak louder. No one dared. I met others and felt in a strange way connected. I wanted to ask, do I recognize you from somewhere? Surely not. This is just the beginning. I didn't even know what I was, let alone who or when or where. Most were preoccupied, running from themselves. Some begged to be let down. Others already kneeled, uttering a prayer. It was a land of souls waiting for something. And when the moment God chose came, an angel announced, lower your glare and a soul cloaked in light would enter our crowd. The rest of us couldn't see. We found ourselves bowed. And just as the weight became all too much, she raised a hand and it began just as God had vowed. Sallallahu alayhi wa